This is the most financially dangerous thing we have talked about for a very long time, because this is kryptonite. You know, the stuff that can take down Superman, and Superman in our little world is obviously in NVIDIA. This is a fuse being lit, and no one has been paying attention, but just now we are getting tidbits. I've been yakking about it for some time now, but it has finally started to dawn on some people, and they are starting to talk, just on the fringes, but it is starting. We go now into the latest bubble, the AI bubble. Tristan Green writes for Cointelegraph, and his piece is entitled, EU says chat GPT outputs too much false information to comply with the rules. He writes, quote, while the assessment remains ongoing, OpenAI appears to have made little in the way of progress since 2023. The chief complaint appears to be that chat GPT is prone to outputting inaccurate information. As a matter of fact, writes the EDPB, due to the probabilistic nature of the system, the current training approach leads to a model which may also produce biased or made-up outputs, end quote. No kidding. The most interesting thing to me is that they have been trying for a year and a half and can't make it better. It is a regurgitator, not a contemplator. That is the fundamental limitation. Green writes another article, this time about Elon Musk's proclamations about the dangers of AI. Must double down saying that the AI would replace humans and do everything better and that humans would lack meaning in their life. My favorite part of this article is when Green mentions that Musk is raising money for his own AI company. He also mentions, quote, it bears mentioning that Musk's AI related predictions haven't also fared so well. In 2019, he famously promised that Tesla would field one million fully autonomous robot taxis on the road by 2020, end quote. The grift is strong in this one. From hype to actual AI information, in the Dell earnings call, Tony Sakanahi, an analyst from Sanford Bernstein and Company LLC, asked why AI server revenue went up $1.7 billion, but operating profit was flat and margins on AI servers effectively zero. This kicked off numerous questions, and Dell executives danced around the question. Well, the market responded, and Dell's stock dropped 17.9% that Friday despite large revenues for AI servers. The profit wasn't there, folks. I've been saying for a very long time, the profits are coming where to support these valuations. I know people are buying AI chips from NVIDIA, but who is monetizing AI? Without monetization, without monetization, monetization somewhere, somehow this bubble bursts and bursts spectacularly. If ChatGPT, the flagship that started this boom last year, can't get its house in order and Elon can be about as trustworthy as Donald T in the, you know, in the eye of this storm, then what chances does this industry have besides spending money for a little while longer? If you believe what they're telling you, it's the future. If you choose to believe them, fine. I'm sure they, like Dell, don't have a vested interest in telling you that. I personally think AI could serve a purpose, that of the greatest regurgitator of all time. Instead of Google, we use the regurgitator. It actually has the ability to grab a lot of search items and recall them. It isn't thinking, and it probably needs help ordering them, but the recall power to sift through data sets would be akin to having like like a photographic memory, one that is really close to perfect. So close that when it is wrong, no one expects it or probably even notices. This is why Google seems like the one major company that could be affected by this technology. I think code writing, language, and logical operations are obvious areas that raw computing power can provide benefit. Emily Berry had a very unique insight in Market Watch when she was asked, when she asked Rosenblatt Securities analyst Barton Crockett why investors should take a pause on investing in Google, and it was his last point I found interesting. Quote, finally, he mentioned that Alphabet could wind up in a higher than anticipated capital expenditure spending cycle for AI as companies feel competitive pressure to ensure that they're well positioned on the technology, end quote. You see, this is a high stakes game of keeping up with the Joneses and all the big boys are playing. The chips are the way to keep your stock price high. The mention of AI gets your stock to jump and some seem to think that it will never come back to earth. Like the Challenger flight, it will land sooner than you think. 
Ken Griffin from Citadel also thinks so. If you don't know who he is, he is one of the smartest traders on earth. He is amassing a fortune in financial trading and very smart. He, in essence, started a hedge fund in college at Harvard and did so so he could short the market in 1987 and profited handsomely. He is worth more than $30 billion. He is so smart, he moved his whole operation from Chicago to Florida. However, he too is a man of shaky morality. In the great financial crisis, he wouldn't let people have their money out of his fund. He was leveraged, and if he would have started liquidating, the whole damn thing could have fallen down. Don't be surprised if we don't see this again, but maybe Ken learned his lesson. However, he is very connected and very astute. And here's his latest quote on AI from Yoon Lee's report on CNBC. Quote, we are at what is widely viewed as a real inflection point in the evolution of technology with the rise of large language models. Some are convinced that within three years, almost everything we do as humans will be done in one form or another by LLMs and other AI tools, Griffin said Friday during a, an event for Citadel's new class of interns in New York. For a number of reasons, I am not convinced that these models will achieve that type of breakthrough in the near future, end quote. I think near future is exactly right. The technology is nowhere ready for prime time thinking, and perhaps that is a good thing. He continues, quote, machine learning models do not do well in a world where regimes shift. Self-driving cars don't work very well in the north due to snow. When the terrain changes, they have no idea what to do. Griffin said, machine learning models do much better when there's consistency, end quote. Garbage in and garbage out. They basically can't adapt to anything that they haven't been fed. How do you think they would have responded to 9-11? Jeffrey Funk and Gary Smith write for Market Watch, and they have another insight. It is systemic. Quote, the fundamental problem with ChatGPT and other large language models, LLMs, is that they do not understand what words mean. They are very much like a young savant who can recite every word in all six volumes of the history of the decline and fall of the Roman Empire without comprehending any of the content. Without such comprehension, LLMs are not going to morph into artificial general intelligence or AGI, the ability to perform any intellectual task that human beings can do. Many AI enthusiasts, including Tesla's Elon Musk, Jensen Huang of NVIDIA, and pioneering AI researcher Ben Gortzel nonetheless claim that AGI is just a few years away. This cheerleading certainly helps raise funds, just ask ChatGPT's Sam Altman, and sell computer chips, just ask NVIDIA, but it is increasingly recognized that the breathless hype is another case of Silicon Valley's fake it until you make it mentality. It is easy for startups and major players to make seductive predictions and promises about the next great thing. End quote. Bingo. These people are hope trafficking and selling it. They have seen a few people do this, and now the room is full of imitators. For every Bezos that faked it until he made it, there are Elon Musk promising self-driving and miracle cars. They are so miraculous that it seems there are more brands of EV cars making a car every bit as good as he does that when I was a kid looking at internal combustion engines. When the public stops believing these sales hypes, the stock of Tesla goes from 220 to 20. Volkswagen stopped buying Rivians. We stop investing in wind turbines at sea, and for goodness sake, stop building AI data, data centers to suck up all the electricity. We stop listening to Al Gore on the environment. It's time when we start thinking and reading for ourselves on all this other nonsense as well. I keep warning about the malinvestment on this, and here is Christopher Mims writing for the Wall Street Journal, quote, a mature technology is one where everybody knows how to build it. Absent profound breakthrough breakthroughs, which are becoming exceedingly rare, no one has an edge in performance. At the same time, companies look for efficiencies, and whoever is winning shifts from who is in the lead to who can cut costs to the bone. The last major technology this happened with was electric vehicles, and now it appears to be happening to AI. The commoditization of AI is one reason that Anshu Sharma, chief executive of data and AI privacy startup Skyflow and a former vice president at business software giant Salesforce, thinks that the future for AI startups like OpenAI and Anthropic could be dim. End quote. 
That's why EVs and self-driving hasn't advanced anymore either. It is an application of the Pareto principle that 80% is easy, but the remaining 20% is hard. Mims continues, quote, an off-sided figure in arguments that were in an AI bubble is a calculation by Silicon Valley venture capital firm Sequoia that the industry spent $50 billion on chips from NVIDIA to train AI in 2023, but brought in only $3 billion in revenue. That difference is alarming, but what really matters to the long-term health of the industry is how much it costs to run AIs. Numbers are almost impossible to come by and estimates vary widely, but the bottom line is that for a popular service that relies on generative AI, the costs of running it far exceed the already eye-watering cost of training it, end quote. This is a unique blend of inefficient and costly. This is akin to hiring a narcoleptic to oversee security. It is a cash-burning system that the entire world stock market is leaning on right now. Do you know how goddamn stupid this is? No, 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 no. Let me help you out still, still more. Here is an article that talks about Meta's new AI gizmo called Cicero. This from Zero Hedge, according to the Futurism site. Quote, led by Massachusetts Institute of Technology postdoctoral researcher Peter Park, that paper found that Cicero not only excels at deception, but seems to have learned how to lie the more it gets used, a state of affairs much closer to explicit manipulation than, say, AI's propensity for hallucination, in which models confidently assert the wrong answers accidentally. As Park explained in a press release, we found that Meta's AI had learned to be a master of deception, end quote. This is where we are going to outsource our thinking, our busy work, our tasks for jobs. What kind of world is this going to be? It's going to be an incorrect one with lots of errors, deceptions, and made-up bullshit. This is why we can't outsource our thinking. We can't allow a device to tell you something and we believe it, no questions asked. We can't be that lazy. We have to think, actively think, critically think. And the more we think, the more we realize that this doesn't make any sense. Know this. Bookworms like me will read the books written about this in 20 years. The authors will say after the fact that it was pretty obvious to everyone, but it isn't simply right now. People believe so many things that aren't real right now. If you pulled an earbud out of a Gen Z, -er, there would be nothing but bullshit and bong resin oozing out of their ear for a week. I want to give them a hug like Robin Williams in Goodwill Hunting and simply whisper, it's not your fault. It's not your fault. It's not your fault. It is true. It isn't their fault that their parents were idiots and their parents' parents were idiots. This is just the cycle of life. And Tom Petty, we are free falling right now. Sincerely yours, C. Thomas Printer. On this date in history, 161 years ago to be exact, the Battle of Gettysburg ended. It also unofficially ended the South's chances of winning the war and America's chances at, as, at preserving itself as a republic. Also born on this date, the newly freed Julian Assange. Enjoy your freedom, Julian. Thank you for listening today, and you can find all of our articles and more on our website, cthomasprinter.com.